In a recent article by the Daily Sabab uh, in their dip diplomacy uh, section, uh, the title of the article is Turkey Mobilizing Regional Powers, Russia, Iran, to Find Solutions to Regional Crisis. And if you haven't heard, uh, Turkey has also agreed with Iran to work with uh, Syria and to try to bring this uh, uh, civil war to an end. And this is an effort to try to bring uh, the Middle East crisis uh, to an end. Not, and this isn't just talking about Israel. This is talking about the fallout that has come from this civil war. I mean, this has affected pretty much everybody in which it has created a rather large migrant population that is uh, being pushed upon the rest of the world. And we have that problem here in the United States where Mr. Obama has been allowing thousands of migrants from that area to come into the United States. And there's no, no doubt that many of those probably are terrorists to begin with. But that's another story. But reading from the article, says President uh, Erdogan uh, stressed the significance of Syria in a recent interview he gave to Al Jazeera and said Russia, Iran, Iraq, and Turkey must unite for Syria. We are Syria's neighboring countries. We must discuss the issue of Syria with Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and Jordan. However, we must no longer discuss Syria with those countries that do not have relations with it. Following the critical meeting between Erdogan and uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu uh, met Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif on uh, Friday in Ankara, where, where the two ministers expressed mutual understanding on Syria's territorial integrity. Both foreign ministers said that they had a, a difference of opinion, but they believe they're on the same path as, as far as what needs to be done in order to solve this crisis. We must combat radical terrorism, uh, terrorist organizations together. We will get stronger through our cooperation in finding permanent peace and solutions in Syria. We are pleased by the cooperation between Turkey and Russia. He said that Turkey's security is Iran's security and added, there has all, always been positive dialogue between Turkey and Iran in regard to the Syrian issue. In order to establish security, peace, and in the uh, conflict in Syria, all sides must cooperate. Well, now looking at critical Bible prophecy, it does state that at some point in time in Ezekiel 38, in the early uh, verses in uh, 1 through 4, that uh, Turkey would at some point in time come together with Iran and uh, Russia to attack Israel. Now, certainly we don't know at this point in time when that will be. Some people believe it will be before the tribulation period starts, even before the rapture takes place. Some people think it's going to be in between the uh, tri rapture and tribulation period. And there's those, those who believe that it's in the early stages of the tribulation period. And the reason why many believe that is because it does state several times that Israel will be living in peace and safety in their own land. Now, certainly you could take that as being something that uh, as some type of peace agreement has been established by the time that Turkey and uh, Russia and Iran come down. But of course, it also can be interpreted that uh, Israel is back in their own land and living securely in that land. And for the most part, are living secure. Certainly there are pockets of resistance here and there, but the bottom line is they are probably about as secure as any other country, free country or whatever the case may be, there is in the country or in the world. So you, could you might be able to interpret it that way. But many in the Bible prophecy world have interpreted this to mean that there'll be some type of peace accord that will bring peace to Israel and they'll be living safe and peaceful in their own land. And of course there's the, also the issue of unwalled villages. Well there are no unwalled, uh, there are no walled villages really or cities in Israel as we speak. Now certainly there is a fence in certain areas of the uh, uh, borderland uh, on the Palestinian side that have been erected, but that's basically a chain link fence for the most part. There are some 40 foot concrete barriers that are near cities, but that's only about 25 to 30 miles of the given, I believe it's something somewhere around three to 400 miles of the uh, uh, border it shares with the West Bank. So even with that, it's a very low percentage of uh, Israel's borders that are actually protected by a large barrier wall. The vast majority of it is by sensors and chain link fence. But I don't think that's what uh, this passage is talking about anyway. Those barriers and uh, chain link fences are not coming down anyway, anytime soon. And there's really no reason why they'd want that, want, want those barriers to come down. No more than we would want our wall with uh, Mexico 
or uh, Canada or whatever the case may be to come down. We're not at war with Mexico, so but bottom line is, is we still want to put up a barrier and a wall so that uh, we can keep out any migrants trying to get in without uh, legal papers. So I don't foresee those walls coming down under any circumstance. And I can tell you right now, if in fact uh, that was part of any type of a peace situation with the Palestinians and they were demanding that the walls be torn down, uh, that'd throw up a, a big red flag for me. And that'd be the last thing I'd do because of the fact that I think they'd be up to something sneaky. Well, let me just throw this in there regarding Turkey. I don't foresee Turkey being the facilitator of a peace with many uh, and also Israel. Frankly, they've already, this, in fact, they just made their peace and normalization uh, final just a couple of days ago. And frankly, Turkey and Russia have never been at, uh, at odds with each other as far as war is concerned. So there's no peace agreement to be made. Iran, there's no peace agreement to be made with them because of the fact they've always had some type of diplomatic contact there from, from the beginning. No, I'm not saying that they're best friends, but I'm saying that there's never been any type of need for a, a peace proposal or whatever the case may be. Now, of course, Russia and Turkey have had a fallout over a downing of a jet, but I simply don't foresee any type of major peace agreement going on in the region because of uh, some of the differences of the various countries. And as I've said many times, Israel and Turkey have already made, officially made, their peace and have normalized relations just in the last few days. If, in fact, Turkey is or Mr. Erdogan is the Antichrist that, was, that will come, then uh, we sh we're in, the, we're in the, the tribulation period right now. Because the major uh, sign of the start of the tribulation period is Israel making a peace agreement with the Antichrist and many. And there should be other signs that should be popping up as well, such as the two witnesses doing uh, magical and miraculous uh, feats in Jerusalem as they witness. And these two men won't be able to be killed. So I don't see that happening, and I don't foresee that happening in the near future until the rapture of the church actually takes place and the start of the tribulation period. And I said all that for this reason right here. There are a number of people, there's a big movement that believes that Turkey or Saudi Arabia is going to eventually uh, be the nation or nations that will bring forth uh, the Antichrist, either one of those two. Well, pretty much uh, the Saudi plan is dead because the Arab League has pretty much put their weight behind the uh, French initiative. And as far as I can see, Turkey's already made peace with Israel and have normalized relations, so I don't foresee that being necessary. And I certainly don't see that turning into a seven-year peace accord, uh, which is stated in Daniel 9, 27. So I have to logically uh, dismiss the fact that either one of these two countries are going to be the ones who bring peace to Israel. And you know what? I'm after the truth. And if you're after the truth, then you have to dismiss it too as well. And certainly if in fact it does make a comeback, which I don't foresee that it will, but if it does, I'll embrace it. But you know, I, a lot of times I feel that uh, people uh, embrace a certain situation or scenario that they've heard somebody on YouTube uh, come up with. That's simply not biblical. And when it doesn't come to pass, they continue to embrace it thinking that it's like a stock that has dropped the bottom's dropped out of it. They think at some point in time it's going to go come back. But instead goes down in flames and the company declares bankruptcy. Well, that's the way it is a lot of times with Bible prophecy uh, speculation. You know, it's kind of like this Psalm 83 war, Psalm 83 scenario, this war that uh, Bill Salas came up with. He didn't actually invent that. There was actually somebody else. Many others who came up before he did. He just made it famous and wrote a book on it. But his scenario has never come true. And there are so many holes in that scenario, it's ridiculous. And if you want to find out what they are, I have, I've written several uh, articles and also have videos that uh, you can look up. But there are so many people out there who are continuing to hang on to that scenario, even though it simply has no weight or water in it. You know, for me, it's, it's, uh, it's like this. If something or, uh, comes up that simply does not uh, have merit or whatever the case may be, and what I mean by it doesn't have merit, I mean it's not biblically correct. I'm going to drop it, and I'm not going to teach that any longer. You know, every once in a while somebody will email me and say, you know what, the pre-tribulation rapture simply does not make sense biblically, and they'll give their reasons. And I always tell that person or email that, you know what, if you can give me biblical reasons why I should not believe the pre-tribulation rapture, I'll embrace anything that's the truth. 
and they'll attempt to give me their uh, biblical proof. Basically, it's misinterpreted or it uh, does not provide a smooth transition from uh, tribulation period to second coming of Christ to judgment of the nations to millennium. Then I simply can't embrace it. It must have a smooth transition from place to place to place. And then I'll ask them uh, if, in fact, the uh, uh, their rapture theory is correct, then who's going to populate the mill millennium? And, of course, n no one has ever been able to tell me who's going to be able to populate the millennium outside of a pre-tribulation rapture. And for that reason, I have to continue to believe that the rapture will be pre-tribulation. But if, in fact, somebody ever comes up with a good, solid, biblical answer to who's going to populate the millennium, then I will have to drop the pre-tribulation rapture and go with that one, but no one's ever done it. And the reason why I say this is because I'm searching for the truth. I'm not just trying to give the listener or the reader what they want to hear. I want to have a good, solid Bible prophecy information source that I can provide to those who are here, here now, and especially to those who are here after the rapture of the church. And speaking of that, I want to also pass on to you something that I just created. You know, I have various listeners from all over the world, but one of them emailed me and told me that they had created a in-case-of-rapture break glass. And what they did is they put one of my books in a glass picture frame and put on it, in case of rapture, break glass. And I thought that was an ingenious idea. And this uh, reader told me where they put, they, they located this. They put it by their door or on their door or whatever the case may be. And I did the same thing. I created my own in case of rapture case, and I placed it by my door. And I'm going to show you some pictures right now of uh, where I put it in my house. And I thought this was just a fantastic idea. I just picked up some case, and uh, it was at a garage sale. So it wasn't expensive in any way. Stuck the books, book in the case and hung it near my door. And then made my own sign in case of rapture uh, break glass. So it was very inexpensive to put together. And I want to encourage you to put this, you know, every Christian to put this in their home. So when the rapture does take place, that you would be able to have a tool for them to uh, take with them. Because uh, the bottom line is, is when the rapture takes place, people are going to be looking for you. Eventually, somebody's going to get your home. And the first people who are going to uh, be involved in uh, either selling your home or liquidating or whatever the case may be, are going to be your uh, lost relatives. And certainly, it is a good witnessing tool for those uh, who do visit your home who are not saved. I can't imagine that they're not going to ask you what in the world that is next to your door. So I'd recommend that you uh, put this in your home in a very convenient spot so that all who enter will be able to see it. And you know what? It would be also be a good idea to put it in every church. So if you make one for your home, also make one for your church and ask your pastor, first of all, if you allow that to be placed in the church in a convenient spot. I can't believe that any Bible-believing pre-tribulation rapture preacher would not allow that to be placed. And if, in fact, you do create one of these uh, and take some pictures of it and send it on to me, I'd like to see what you've done. Uh, you may be able to improve on my idea, and for the ones that are sent to me, uh, I may just send those out to my readers so they can see some of the ideas that you've come, come up with. And if you're on Facebook or wh wh wherever it is that you are, I would pass these pictures along to everyone you know. Uh, in fact, you can go to my Facebook page right now, which you can find uh, on my YouTube page, or look up by my, by my name in Calvary Prophecy Report or whatever the case may be. You'll find me. But wouldn't it be great if every Christian uh, put this in their home and left this behind for those who would come after them? And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait until the rapture takes place and you see that you've been left behind uh, to come to know the Lord. Today is the day of salvation, and besides that, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Savior today. Let Him save you. Just ask Him, just, just ask him to save you. Repent of your sins and turn your life over to Him from this day forward. And you Christians, don't forget to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide to Your Lost Friends and Loved Ones. There's two versions, a free version, which you can download, or you can get the paperback. Go down to the description below this video and uh, go to whichever link uh, you is applicable to, your, uh, to whatever you want to do. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.